Hey golfers, Drew Mahold here with Second Swing at the Minnetonka Tour Van location. Pretty exciting day today. Uh, we got the Ping G410 LST. Thomas Campbell, Master Club Fitter, is joining me today. Thomas, how you doing? Good. How are you doing, Drew? I'm good. I'm about ready to hit some shots with the Ping G410 LST. Um, new addition to the G410 line and very happy to have you joining me as well to uh, fit me essentially. I guess, what are your thoughts initially here about this Ping G410 LST driver? Yeah, so I was excited we were able to get our hands on the G410 LS Tech driver. Um, now knowing you, you have quite a lot of club speed. You now we need to lower that spin somehow. Mm -hmm. So the LS Tech model is a great addition to the line with the Ping G410 Plus sure. and SF Tech model. Now they've got the finally released this LS Tech model that can help us re reduce that spin. So really excited to see some numbers, see what we can do to help you out, and then let's get after it. Absolutely, let's get to it. All right, Thomas, I'm gonna swing a few times here. Uh, I can't hit it as solid as you can. I'm not as consistent in the center <laughs> of the face as you are, but uh, I guess we'll see here. Um, we'll find out how forgiving this club really is. Right. So, yep. so what do you got right there? Is that the Ping LS Tech the, nine degree head? It is the nine degree, uh, everything's in standard. All right, well, let's see a couple then. One felt like a hook. It's a little bit <laughs> low left. Well, you got that. a lot of club speed there. There's that low spin. Yeah, though. yeah, 1700. <laughs> Normally, when it's going a little <laughs> low left, it does typically yeah, yeah, spin yeah. a little bit less. <laughs> yeah, that can be my myth sometimes. But uh, you can definitely see the low spin results there. That looked see, that was similar. a miss. Yeah. yeah. That was one off the heel. I'll try to it's hit right. solid here. Give you a chance to kind of get loose here. Hit, you know. Oh yeah. It's a little bit straighter. Yeah, barely. Yeah. Need to hit one solid. <laughs> So even still, we know that one was a missed hit, that last one. Still yeah. only spun at 3,300. Now, right. obviously, it's a little higher than we would like, but we know that right. was clearly And I can missing. guarantee you my misses with the current driver I have are spinning more than that with a, that higher rate. So I can tell the difference already. That one sounded a little more solid. There we go. Yeah, that one's a little better. That was good. A little more in the center of the face. So we're noticing the trend of definitely missing it a little bit left. Yeah. There is some adjustability we can talk about with mm -hmm. this club, just like right. the 410 Plus and just like the SF Tech model. We can maybe play around with the lie setting. We can also mm -hmm. play around with the, the bias yep. with the center of gravity with, with these settings yeah. here too. Well, so. you are the master fitter here. So what would you do if you, you see me hit four there with yeah. the so LST? First, what are you thinking? First thing I'm noticing is that low left shot. Yeah. A lot of, you know, tour pros, they hate to miss it left. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing we can definitely do is we can adjust the, the lie setting with this mm -hmm. particular driver. So without even talking about, you know, your launch angle or spin or anything like that, I'm just going to try and straighten this out a little bit. Mm -hmm. The idea behind going a little bit flatter is to just minimize that left yeah. shot for you. So there is essentially eight positions on this uh, hosel here that can be adjusted. You can go up or down and left. And also there's three flat lie settings on this one. So what I'm doing here, um, so I mentioned there's eight different settings. I'm just putting this on the flat setting. I'm not going to change the loft for now. Okay. Just gonna, let's just try going to the pure yep. flat setting at nine degrees. Let's because, just see I, mean, I, I do prefer right to left ball flight, but when it's starting left and going left. Yeah, yeah those things where the, down the left rough, rough yeah. line, you had one <laughs> in the, the fairway Probably there, not in the fairway. Maybe that last one's in the fairway. All right, so I'm just going to yeah. type in flat setting here. Okay, so I'll hit a couple more with this one and see, let's see what happens. Ooh. Still got that little bit of a left miss there. Yeah, I got a, sometimes I got a tendency where I uh, come over the top a little bit. 
That one looked a little straighter. That sounded real solid, actually. Yeah, that one was contact wise. Very that nice. was my best one. That was really good. Yeah. That was excellent. 2100 spin it was very See, good. See, that's, yeah, I don't think I've sniffed that in the past, unless I've hit one of those little duck hooks. It looked a little bit left. Look, it hit a solid, solid though. Contact was good. We're definitely getting a little more bull speed in this flat setting. Um, you know, still noticing the trend of kind of favoring the left side. We'll try a couple more with that, with that setting, and then I do have another trick up my sleeve as well. Oh, do ya? That's the master fitter. <laughs> Tricks up the sleeve. Ooh, missed that one. That was a little bit of a miss hit. Wow, I am all over that bunker on the left on that screen. Yeah, we need to get you a little bit more kind of fade bias here. So I mentioned fade bias. So if you want to pass me this driver. So we tried flat, mm -hmm. limited a little bit, but still yeah. kind of following that, that, left, um, that left side right there. So another thing we can also do with the G410 driver heads is we can put it more in a fade position. Yeah. So right now we had it just standing in the, in the neutral position. Essentially, kind of robot testing, draw to fade is about 20 yards, essentially. So if we could maybe get yeah. 10 yards from there to the fade, I mean, that would essentially yeah. be a huge gain for us there, oh, too. Yeah. So we want to keep that low spin, but we obviously need to limit that right to left curve. Yeah. OK. So this is maxed out to complete fade bias that we can do with this club. All right. Complete fade bias. I'm still hoping I can put something down the middle here. It looks straighter. Stroud is straighter. Not quite in the middle of the face, but it's straighter. You can definitely hit it straighter. Pulled a little bit. Not quite as far left as some of those other misses, yeah. though. <laughs> that was, yeah, that would have been a ways over there. That one felt bad. Started a little straighter as well. Hmm. Very nice. Well, we'll hit one more here, and I mean, it looks like that purple is definitely the straightest. So far. It's moved a little bit, yep. That sounded really solid. Yeah, that one felt really good. Wow. That was smoked. Wish I could hit there it go. 320. Oh, well, <laughs> well then, I know you're not going left <laughs> 10 times in a row. Yeah, but, that, was, uh, that was an excellent swing right there. That was really solid. So, yep. yeah, that's, I mean, you tuned it up for me, you know? Yep. Moving the weights around and the lie angle, and this is, uh, like I said, I've been very interested in the G410 LST for a while yep. since I found out they were going to, you know, release one here, and I am very enticed, you know, moving stuff around and getting into this setting. Yeah, so that was kind of as, far, as may, much fade bias as I could make it. Yep. We know that you particularly, you know, with your club speed, we need an LS Tech driver right. because you have a lot of speed, you generate mm -hmm. a lot of speed. I'm jealous of the speed. I wish I could swing that hard. <laughs> um, and maybe I'll get there one day. Um, but so the Ping G410 LS Tech driver, it actually does sit slightly more open. I think it's more considered Yeah, I noticed that in the preferred. standard setting, it was, um, it was kind of open. Just to, you know, like yeah. I said, tour players, they do not like to hit it left with yeah. the driver. So put in a flat setting, putting that weight all the way out in the toe right there is going to make it a little bit more fade bias. We noticed that last swing, that was really solid. But we just noticed that trend of it kind of slightly moving over to the right, mm -hmm. every adjustment we kind of made right there. Oh, yeah. So, so Drew, I uh, took out you know that that miss hit that you hit there that was a little bit spinnier, going just short mm -hmm. of just shy of 280. I wish I could miss hit at 280, but you know <laughs> it's it's pretty impressive right there. Um, the good news though was that with that particular shot, it went straight. Yeah. You know it was definitely a miss mm -hmm. hit, but that's the forgiveness you definitely would probably get with the G410 driver line essentially. Yeah. Um, but you will notice on this left screen. Obviously, a little bit of a trend and movement, a little bit more towards the middle of the fairway. That's what's very, very yep. important. Um, if we were going to just kind of take a look at the numbers, with we notice your club speed around about 115 to 116 miles an hour. A lot of club speed. Um, definitely would fit into the Tor X 
chaff that you currently were mm -hmm. hitting with, with that club there um, to help, you know, obviously, with control on the club face. Uh, your ball speed, what's actually really interesting we notice here is once we went from the standard setting to the flat setting, the ball speed increased. So you, uh, it enabled you to hit the middle of the middle of the club face. Mm -hmm. Also, when we had added to the fade bias position, ball speed also increased just a little bit more. So we went from 166 miles an hour to 172. So that's that's huge. I mean, that is going to help allow us to hit the ball yeah. a little bit further. It's definitely a lot higher too than I'm used to with the driver I hit now. I've, I mean, I've come in here and hit a few yep. times with my current driver, and it's been you know average about kind of what that um, you know 166 with the uh, kind of original settings on this, uh, and I, being able to adjust it obviously bumped it up quite a bit. Yep. Yep, so we do notice your smash factor also a little bit higher in those particular settings, mm -hmm. so that's just telling me that you hit it closer to the middle of the club face. Um, we didn't really talk about the launch angle earlier on. We noticed launching it fairly low. A lot of that is because essentially you are coming over the top a little yeah. bit. When you do that, you kind of close that club face pull. Naturally, that ball is going to launch a little bit low. Mm -hmm. um, one thing I may consider is adding a little bit more loft to the driver for you. Um, yeah. However, I you know I'd be concerned about going way up and laugh because I don't want that spin rate to all of a sudden kind of yeah, go sure. the balloon up in the air. Um, but naturally, we notice as it ball went a little bit straighter, the launch angle went up just a little bit higher. We notice went from yeah. seven degrees to about eight point six. So that's that's definitely kind of a big gain. Um, spin rate very very low spin. So this is a low <laughs> spinning head. You have a lot of speed. Naturally, players that have a lot of speed typically spin the ball a lot. Optimally, two to 3,000 is a great spin rate area to be in. Uh, we'll notice these two that were going pretty far left. So that when you're hitting yeah. the first two settings, 2,400, 1,800 spin, a lot of that's because the ball is just going low and left. We'll notice when we put it in the flat fade bias setting, yeah, the spin was a little bit higher. Then that's because essentially it was no longer curving as much right to left. Yeah. 2,700 spin is still excellent when you have ball speed in the 170s and club speed, you know, as high mm -hmm. as you currently have there too. The other thing you'll also notice is now because the ball is now flying a little straighter and not going as far left, your peak height was higher. So mm -hmm. 88 feet in the air versus 69 and 50 feet in the air. That's yeah. important to get that carry distance up. So I know we're showing kind of total distance. If I switch this to carry distance, oh, yeah. you'll notice there's a huge, huge change right there. So essentially we're taking out those bunkers out of play that <laughs> are going to be around the 260 mm -hmm. mark. Just bomb it straight over them as long as you can keep the ball up in, in yep. the air. So carry distance is very, very important. Obviously where we play in Minnesota, pretty, pretty rough spring we've had so far. Yeah. It's been pretty wet. Carry distance is important because the ball is not going to roll as far essentially right. there. So that's always kind of interesting to, to note with the re regards to kind of your carry distance. Is yeah, if you look at the numbers there on the carry distance average, you got 281 when you got everything adjusted and tuned. And 281 versus 250, yeah. Uh, I know which one I would definitely would, would like better. <laughs> so yeah. That last one you hit, that one right there, carried 293 yards. It's pretty far. It's gone 320 I'll yards. It. Yeah, I just got to be so. more consistent about it. Well, Thomas, I'm no you. I don't hit it on the center of the face every time with you know, a nice little draw down the middle. Um, but I was able to get a couple of those after you adjusted with the, you know, the weight moving to the fade side and, of course, and moving the lie angle a little bit. Um, what were you kind of, is it what you expected? Um, what did you see out of this uh, little hitting session here? Um, and what do you think about the G410 LST overall? Yeah, so your swing, you definitely kind of have that, that little bit of a draw going on. So we were trying to limit the, the amount of draw that was going mm -hmm. on. So we played around with two different things we possibly can do with this driver. First thing we did is we put it in a flatter setting. So essentially what the reason behind that is to try and limit that right to left shot. Mm -hmm. We also played around with moving the center of gravity around. So nice thing this year with Ping G410 line is we can now adjust that center of gravity in the back right here. We essentially what we did was moved it from the back and moved it out towards the toe mm -hmm. to reduce that curve. So we noticed you know, both the flat setting and the standard setting it was still kind of going down the left side. We noticed those last few shots with having this out on that fade bias really limited that curve and was able to keep that ball in the air for the ball could carry further and go further right. for you. So that was, that was huge. I mean, we picked up quite a bit of carry distance just mm -hmm. because of that. And the spin, yeah, the spin went up just a little bit because it wasn't curving as much right to left. 
but it still was in the optimal range. So very, very good numbers, what I, what I saw, especially that last drive, that was excellent. So. Yeah, I know I was very impressed with the numbers that I saw compared to what I'm using now. Uh, I know I'm thinking long and hard about putting this in my bag and I might as well do so after seeing that last one. So um, obviously thank you for setting up the, the adjustable settings yep. there. And uh, like we said, a uh, very nice piece of equipment here, brand new G410 LST. If you're interested in something like this, obviously I would check out secondswing.com or schedule a fitting with a fitter like Thomas and uh, we'll get you set up with one of the best new drivers on the market.